Hey, what's up? So for the past 130 days, I've given up drinking alcohol and it's had a profound effect on my life. I just did a video on that of my experiences on giving up alcohol for the past 100 days. And I talked about my benefits and my experiences and that video kind of blew up. It was one of my best performing videos. And within that video, I had a lot of comments from people who wanted to do the same thing but who just didn't know exactly where to start. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you my particular process that I use to get started on not drinking alcohol and what's actually helped me continue for the past 130 days and beyond, which actually has made it super easy to not even drink in the first place. And that is what we're gonna be talking about in this video. I'm not gonna be talking about the benefits and the experiences and all that kind of stuff because I've already talked about in the last video, I'll have the video in the description below. But in this one, I'm gonna share with you my process in terms of giving up alcohol and what I use to eliminate it from my life. So I wanna preface this by saying that I'm not an expert on quitting alcohol, okay? So, you know, I'm saying this from the perspective of someone who's had alcohol as a part of their life, who always thought it was healthy and who realized that it wasn't healthy and decided to do something about it. So if you are watching this and you are someone who has a problem with alcohol, who needs to drink it multiple times a day in order to just live life, in order to just feel normal, or in order to just like experience life, I would say that you would probably not wanna watch this video because I'm not coming from a perspective of being a hardcore alcoholic. And I realize there's many levels to this, as some would say in the comments, <laughs> but I wanna say that I am not a giving up alcohol expert. I just wanna share my experience on what I used to give it up. So if you are someone who feels that they have a serious problem with alcohol, I would highly recommend getting professional help around this. But if that's not you, let's continue on with my process of what I use to give up alcohol. So my first step with giving up alcohol was using education. So I always thought that alcohol was a healthy part of your life. I've seen studies where they say that people who drink alcohol are living longer than people who don't drink alcohol. And those are like correlation studies based on the fact that they're within communities and within these communities where they are interacting with each other socially, there's really nothing about the substance, it's actually more about the social interaction. So, you know, my whole perception of alcohol itself was that it was a healthy thing to do from time to time in moderation. And education was my first step to removing my ignorance around alcohol. And I said in the last video that I started with watching the Andrew Huberman video on alcohol and its effect on your body and brain. And that was an eye opener for me. I didn't realize how dangerous this toxin is to our bodies. And I liken it to this statement that I heard, I think it was from Andrew Huberman, maybe it wasn't, but we are gonna look at alcohol the same way that doctors used to smoke cigarettes inside the hospitals or <laughs> every single time a child was born or every single time that they had a break. We are gonna be looking at alcohol almost in the same way because it is a dangerous toxin that not a lot of people realize how its effect it is or how much of an effect it has on our brains and bodies. So if you are getting started on this journey, I would say to get education around this. Education is the antidote to ignorance. So your first step is to actually find out what effect it has on your health. So the second step is awareness. So you have to ask yourself, what place does alcohol have in your life? What times do you find yourself using alcohol? Is it uh, to numb out stress? Is it to be in social situations? Is it to be around certain friends or family members? Is it accepted as a part of your friends and family as just a normal part of your lifestyle? And where did you learn this behavior? Where is the root of this behavior of where you started using alcohol? What we wanna do is we wanna get aware as to why we turn to alcohol in the first place. And this has a big dose of just getting to know yourself. Not a lot of people take the time to get to know themselves, especially when it comes to doing certain, uh, certain types of substances. And the reason being is because these substances, whether we like it or not, it gives us a benefit. It may not be the benefit that we want long-term, but in the short term, it gives us some sort of benefit that makes us keep on doing it. Maybe in social situations, it is used as lubrication for being able to speak as freely as you want. Maybe it, when it comes to stress, it allows you to just forget about the stress at the time of when you are feeling that stress. 
it may be like for anxiety, it allows you to forget about the anxiety. But again, we want to get to the point where we are aware of why we are doing this action. And not a lot of times we question why we do these actions. We just see other people doing it or it just becomes this habitual thing where we don't necessarily question it. And we want to bring some form of awareness around it. So the best thing to do is get out of the journal, start digging. If you want, you can talk to a friend who you trust, who doesn't necessarily have this attachment to alcohol, or you can actually talk to a qualified therapist or someone who's just gonna listen to you just uh, talk about your relationship to alcohol. And awareness is the second step. So after you've educated yourself and after you brought awareness as to why you do it, what you wanna do is you wanna take small actions. So when I got started, I didn't say to myself that, okay, well this year I'm gonna go dry or this is gonna be this whole month, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna get away from alcohol. I never said that to myself. I actually started with a seven day challenge and I said, okay, for the next seven days, I'm just gonna stop drinking alcohol and I'm gonna see exactly what type of effect it has on my body, my health, and my spirit. And when we keep the time frame small, we release whatever types of overwhelm we may have with bigger time frames. Like imagine if you give yourself like a full on year and say, I'm not going to be drinking alcohol. By about like day three, you see the enormity of your task and it just overwhelms you to the point where you say, well, screw it. I mean, like the, the, the journey or the destination is so far, it's just not going to be conducive to me wanting to even complete this. But if you give yourself a small enough time frame and you give yourself small enough actions, that is enough to create momentum. And that's all you want. You, you want to create momentum. You don't necessarily want to eat an elephant all in one bite. You want to eat an elephant in one little chunk and you just want to focus on that like one little chunk right there. And what I found is seven days is enough time to see momentum. And I have a little bit of a process that I've seen work with fitness clients, with myself and with health, and it goes like this. So one day is enough to start momentum. Seven days is enough to actually set a groove. 21 days is the start of a habit. 90 days is the start where it becomes a part of your lifestyle. And I say it's about one to two years of doing this particular action which becomes a part of your identity. You don't have to worry about the one to two years. All you have to worry about is what's next in front of you. Focus on very small time frames, very small actions, and then put your focus all on that without having to think of the enormity of how long you want to give it up for. And step four is replacement. So if there's anything that I know about something that we do as a routine, something that we do that's habitual, is that when you give up or eliminate one thing, it creates a vacuum. And if you don't replace at least one particular action with the habit that you just gotten rid of, then the habit is gonna come back. You want to replace things. And I'm gonna pre paraphrase this from what I've heard from uh, a Jordan Peterson speech. I'm gonna link it down below. It's actually uh, done in a song from one of my favorite producers. His name is Akira the Don. And one of the things that you wanna do when you give up alcohol is to replace it with something that actually denotes a little bit of adventure. What I did when I gave up alcohol was I put myself under a process and under a sequence of doing something that I call monk mode. And monk mode is essentially saying, I'm gonna give up all of these vices and I'm gonna work on my business, my body and my family. And those are the only things that I'm gonna be focused on during that time. And I replaced it with exercise. I replaced it with journaling. I replaced it with, uh, uh, right now I'm in Costa Rica, so I'm like out surfing every single day, but I replaced the benefits that I was getting from alcohol with other things that were contributing to my life in positive ways. So you want to replace the short-term gratification of drinking with something that actually benefits you in the long term. And again, remember that habits don't operate in a vacuum, they must be replaced. So why not take actions that actually make you a better person instead? And the final step, is introspection. So there were some comments in the videos that were saying that I gave up alcohol for like six months or whatever and I didn't see any benefit. And you know what, I'll, I'll agree with that for some people. Maybe that could be the reality. Maybe that could be the case. Maybe you weren't replacing it with something that was giving you adventure or was making you a better person. But also something that I am reminded of is that the effects that you feel from giving up alcohol can be very subtle and our memories are highly fallible. We forget about these things. We forget 
forget about the energy that we feel the next day. We forget about waking up without hangovers. We forget about uh, not feeling anxiety. And what we need to do is we need to introspect. We need to bring out our journals. We need to write down and we need to talk to ourselves and to denote the benefits that we're getting on a regular basis. That's why we must keep a journal and be introspective about the journey because there are so many things that we miss from not being aware. So for me, if I was not journaling the entire time, what I would have missed was me being able to process my emotions in a healthier way. That seems like very kind of broad to a lot of people, but when you're feeling these things and able to put them down on paper and able to work through them without using a substance to numb yourself, that is huge. That is massive. And that allows you to find healthier ways to deal with your emotions. Because guess what? As human beings, we're always going to feel emotions, right? We're, we're always going to feel emotions. That is a feature. It's not a bug. The more that we can come to terms with these emotions, the more that we can actually transmute them and use them, and the more that we can actually learn about them, the better we're going to be as human beings and the better we're going to learn about ourselves. So another couple of benefits is like the lack of anxiety I felt, the improvement to my sleep. I used a sleep tracker and I was tracking my sleep. I was seeing it improve on a day by day basis. And a lot of these things, they don't come and smack you on the face. They're very subtle <laughs> unless you actually note them down and unless you actually take the time to introspect and to write them out, you're going to come out of it and give up alcohol and be like, okay, that had zero benefit fit on my life whatsoever. So ever since I've been on this journey, I've been journaling every single day. Well, I, I would say most days I've been journaling. And it is through this journaling process where I'm writing down the benefits, I'm writing down how I feel. And even through that particular process of talking to myself, I'm able to lock down these benefits into my identity. It gives me more reasons not to drink alcohol because it gives me more of what we call the sunk cost fallacy. So if I end up choosing to drink after I've done 130 days and seen all of these benefits, then it would seem like it, having that one drink would actually ruin a lot of the benefits that I've seen. Now it becomes the reverse sunk cost fallacy where you know, the more that you do something or the more that I'm abstaining from alcohol, the greater the cost is of actually drinking. So I've come to a point in my life right now where I've locked down these benefits, I've introspected, and I've wrote about them so many times that it's harder for me to drink alcohol than it is to not drink alcohol. And that is one of the best shifts that I've ever made in my entire life. And the last part about introspection is that over the course of time, you end up becoming your own best friend as a result of journaling. So it's a beautiful thing. And I wish that more people would give themselves a chance to do it. So let me summarize. All right. So the first step is going to be education. Next step is going to be self-awareness. Next step after that is going to be small actions, small time frames. The next step after that is going to be replacing the habit. And the final step is to introspect as you go on this journey. And I've used these five steps and I've seen so much benefit in my life that it's actually much easier for me right now to not drink than it is to drink because of everything that I've just explained to you at this very moment. So now it's back to you. Uh, if this is something that's been a part of your life, I hope that these steps will help you uh, become a better person. I do believe that, you know, when we remove certain types of vices, things that have been kind of like just holding on to us for some sort of time, for some people it could be alcohol, for some people it could be marijuana, because for some people it could be like weed, or actually I said marijuana, right? But for some people it could be porn. It could be a lot of things, but once we kind of shed ourselves of these vices, I do know the fact that it actually makes us reach our full potential. So if this is something that you've been dealing with, I really hope that these steps help you. And uh, yes, if you've gone this far and you've got benefit out of this video, uh, yeah, man, I really appreciate if you like and subscribe. I am doing videos every single week on how to reach your full potential and become a better human. And if you want to join that journey and you want to become a better human, then subscribe. And also, if uh, you have any questions or comments, uh, put them down inside of the comments. What part of the video uh, stuck out the best to you? Or even if you have some different feedback from me as well, I'd love to hear it. And that's about it. Hope you got value out of this and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.